Happy Friday Eve, everybody. It is Thursday, September the 3rd, and these are some of the headlines on BizarreBest.com. Plants could help authorities detect bodies in woodlands. The moon is rusting even without liquid water and oxygen. Supercomputer discovers new understanding of COVID-19. And Amazon drivers are hanging smartphones from trees to get more work so they can get the orders first. All these headlines and more on BizarreBest.com. Dude, it's Bizarre Best Headlines, 100% unfiltered. Plants could help detect human remains in dense forest areas because of the way vegetation behaves in decomposing bodies, um, how they act around it. In an article published Thursday in the journal Trends in Plant Science, researchers from the University of Tennessee said tree and shrub canopies could be used as a search asset to help guide and rescue teams to human remains. This is because chemical changes in the ecosystems around human remains, referred to by researchers of ca cadaver decomposition islands, alters the soil and surrounding plant roots and leaves. This, in turn, they said, might lead to plant foliar, a compositional change that could be detected remotely. A team of botanists, anthropologists, and soil scientists from the university will begin experimenting with so-called cadaver islands to better understand how plants could help reduce the time spent in painstaking on foot pursuits and aerial searches. The research will be conducted at the university's anthropology research facility, known as the Body Farm, where scientists examine the process of human body decay under different conditions and how it impacts nearby plants. The authors cautioned that the research was in the early phase, with any feasible use of plants as, body, as a body recovery tool still years away, so don't go around just trying to do this yourself, I guess, but hey, why not? I mean, if it helps you find who you're looking for. However, they said the early stage findings were exciting that the, and that they hoped in the future to scale up technology that would scan plants for specific fluorescence or reflectance signals that indicate human remains. Oh, dude, okay. In similar open landscapes, uh, foot patrols would be effective to find someone missing, but in more forested or treacherous parts of the world like the Amazon, that's not going to be possible at all, said senior author Neil Stewart, a professor of plant sciences at the University of Tennessee, in a statement. This led us to look into plants as indicators of human decomposition, which could lead to faster and possibly safer body recovery. The most obvious results of the islands would be a large release of nitrogen into the soil, especially in summertime when decomposition is happening so fast. So by that, uh, maybe everything in that area would begin to die or turn yellow, rather. Um, when the team faces challenges, hurdles, including the need to have scanners recognize human bodies as distinct from other large mammals, such as deer. In order to do that, they must first understand the metabolites the small molecules specific to the breakdown of human remains that could influence plant appearance. One diagnostic spectra are Once diagnostic spectra are compiled, researchers can begin to think about scaling up to drones and other tech that can analyze a wide stream of air area in a short uh, amount of time. So that's really interesting. We'll keep an eye on that um, because we could use that for multiple reasons. I will list this at BizarreBest.com. Bizarre Discovery reveals the moon is rusting even without liquid water and oxygen. Rusting. The moon, our closest cosmic neighbor and the only other body in the solar system on which humans have set foot, is fairly well known to us. We know that there are there is practically no air. We know that there is water ice, but no liquid water. So you can understand why the detection of Hematite on the moon has, science, has scientists baffled since hematite or hematite is an oxidized form of iron here on earth requires both the presence of air and water to form, especially since the moon is constantly bombarded with streams of hydrogen from solar wind, a reducing agent that 
donates its electron donates its electrons to the materials it interacts with oxidization occurs due to a loss of electrons so even if all the right elements were present for oxidization to occur the solar solar wind should cancel it out it's very puzzling said planetary scientists of the university of hawaii at manoa the moon is a terrible environment for rust to form in it. The rust in question was discovered in data collected by the Indian Space Research Organization. The moon meteorology mapper designed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uses hyperspectral imaging to, form, to perform a granular uh, analysis, giving a detailed breakdown of the moon's surface mineral composition. In this way, um, the colleagues identified ice deposits at high altitudes around lunar poles in 2018. But when he was examining the data, he noticed something strange. When uh, he examined M3 data at the polar regions, he found some spectral features and patterns that are different from those that we see in lower altitudes or Apollo samples. Um, Lee, this guy's name, he was curious whether it is possible that there are water rock reactions on the moon. After months of investigation, uh, he figured out he was seeing a signature of rust, which raised a big question. How the heck did it get there? Well, a big hint could lie in how the uh, rust is distributed. It's, it corresponds pretty strongly with traces of water previously identified and linked to impacts. Scientists believe that water ice could be mixed in with lunar um, regolith. Sorry, I probably hacked it. I'm not a scientist. And excavated and melted during impact events. The rust is also mostly found on the side of the moon that's always facing Earth. That, according to researchers, isn't, is really interesting. Uh, more rust on the lunar near side suggested that it may be related to Earth. This reminded me of a discovery by the uh, Japanese Kagawa mission that oxygen from Earth's upper atmosphere can be blown to the lunar surface by solar wind when the moon is in the Earth's magnetail. So Earth's atmospheric oxygen could be the major oxidant to produce the rust. During the full moon, our satellite is in Earth's magnet tail, the trailing region of the magnosphere, the magneticosphere, <laughs> magnetosphere away from the sun. At these times, over 99% of the solar wind is blocked from reaching the moon, which means the pesky hydrogen reducing agents, um, they're not uh, getting all up in the oxidization process. Um, it doesn't mean the, the mystery is completely solved, though. Interesting, rust is not absolutely absent from the far side of the moon either. Um, there's more on this. Very interesting, and I will link it at BizarreBest.com. What's up, Bizarre fam? Let me tell you what I'm excited about right now. Give me just a second. Bizarre Abyss merchandise. Look at this, it's so comfortable, it's so stretchy. It fits most faces, if not all faces. I mean, if it doesn't fit your face, there's something wrong with your face, I think. It doesn't hurt your ears like most masks do. And our new logo's on it. Ah! Anyway, uh, I'll settle down for a moment. I just wanted to share the amazing news. Bizarrabiss.com, y'all. Bizarrabiss merchandise. <sighs> Make it happen. BizarreBits.com. Real news. No bullshit. Researchers use supercomputers to discover new pathways for COVID-19 inflammation. COVID-19 is challenging to treat. Research shows that there can be six distinct types of disease involving different cl clusters of symptoms. The coronavirus can infect different organs of the body, leading to a variety of symptoms. While pharmaceutical companies are working on a vaccine, a team of scientists led by Dan Jacobson at Oak Ridge National Laboratory has, or ORNL, has been working to understand the system's biology of the virus using data analytic and explainable AI tools on ORNL's Summit supercomputer. 
recently they published a paper on the mecha mechanics model for COVID-19 that can lead to a more targeted therapeutic intervent that can lead to more targeted therapeutic interventions for patients. Severely ill COVID-19 patients often end up on ventilators as their lungs are unable to take in enough oxygen. Analyzing gene expression data, these researchers took a holistic approach to the study using systems biology's framework. By understanding the body's underlying mechanisms and how they respond to the coronavirus, severe symptoms of the pestilence can be explained. If the team's me mechanistic model is proven to be accurate, then time and money can be saved by repurposing existing FDA-approved drugs to treat severe cases of COVID-19. Jacobson says, we are systems biologists, and so this is how we would view the world, and we're trying to understand holistically all the molecular interactions that are happening in cells that lead to uh, the outcomes, whether those outcomes are disease or other traits, our understanding of complex processes focuses on looking at all the layers from genome to gene protein or metabolite expressions from a population as well as the microbiome and how all that, uh, how, and how that's all conditional on environment. And overall, that's what we're doing, uh, is really a holistic systems-based approach. Your lungs can fill up with jello. Analyzing gene expressions of infected individuals against a control group, as well as population scale data, researchers used the Summit and RHEA supercomputers, or RIA supercomputers, housed at the uh, ORNL to discover that the Brady... Kinnon system may be responsible for much of the viral pathogenesis. Brady Kinnon is a peptide that helps to manage blood pressure and can promote inflammation. When more of it's present, it can dilate blood vessels and make them permeable. If produced excessively, it causes blood vessels to leak and thus leak fluid, and thus leads to a fluid buildup in the surrounding tissue that explains why people are drowning. Jacobson says we found that what we found is that the imbalance of the renin or RAS pathway that appear to be present in COVID-19 patients could be responsible for con constantly resensitizing Brady Kinnon receptors. So this imbalance in the RAS pathways will take the brakes off the bottom of the Brady Kinnon pathway at the receptor level. In addition, the downregulation of the ACE gene in COVID-19 patients, which usually degrades Brady Kinnon, is another key imbalance in the regulation of Brady Kinnon levels. We have also observed that the key negative regulator at the top of the Brady Kinnon pathway is dramatically downregulated. Thus, you likely have an increase in Brady Kinnon production as well, stopping many of the braking mechanisms usually in place so the brainy cannon signal spirals out of control. Using the summit to run 2.5 billion correlation calculations, the team found gene expression changes that would likely trigger the production of brainy cannon. It decreased the expression of enzymes that can break down brainy cannon or change how it perceived by selfus cell surface receptors. Such an escalating buildup of Brady Kinnon would cause blood vessels to leak. It could affect other organs in this way as well. There's a broad range of symptoms being observed across a patient population. For example, if you have a lot of fluid leaking out of blood vessels in your brain, this could tend to lead to many of the neurological symptoms that people are experiencing. The research team also examined the relationship between vitamin D binding sites and the genes in the RAS Brady Kinnon pathways. I thought they said vitamin D doesn't help. Vitamin D deficiency has been associated with severe cases of COVID-19. <laughs> They're probably going to block me for even saying this. It's not me. It's on Forbes, dude. Forbes. Clinical pharmaceutical and research partners are needed to understand vitamin D's role in treatment. I am not saying that vitamin D is a cure. I want to make that clear because they're going to kick my ass off of YouTube or some shit. 
The, vi the vitamin D link was an interesting one that affects the very early steps of the RAS pathway. It's simply one component involved in a complex system and we're probably gonna have to target multiple treatments across the entire system to break the cascade. Exactly, dude. One single intervention alone is probably not gonna solve it, but if we understand all the different components and target those collectively, I think we have a better shot at it. Now, um, there was this thing, a study that said that zinc, along with vitamin D and massive amounts of vitamin C, they were treating patients over in Europe with like 50,000 milligrams a day. Um, and uh, that hydroxychloroquine, that the zinc opened up the, the cell so that the chloroquine could get in. And without the zinc, the chloroquine wouldn't work. But dude, I'm not a scientist, okay? All I can tell you is what I read. And it makes sense to me. But I'm, again, there's no freaking cure for this shit until they come up with a vaccine uh, that the FDA has approved. <laughs> Nothing else will work. And you can't even say that it does. So I'm not saying that it does. Uh, another potential therapeutic development path is to repurpose existing FDA approved drugs such as Danazol, Stansolol, and other shit that I can't pronounce to reduce the amount of bradykin and signaling to prevent the escalation of the bradykin and storm. Partnerships with pharmaceutical companies and clinical research are needed to design and implement the right clinical trials to see how these types of treatments can be applied. I'm pretty sure a super cute computer um, is probably right. There's that. <laughs> Get it on, y'all. Jason Jacobson says, in other work, we're also looking at the SARS-CoV-2 virus itself from a systems biology perspective and think that attempts to inhibit the virus itself will also prob probably require a combinatorial strategy. It's probably unlikely there will be a single solution, but instead there will be need to be a collection of therapies similar to what's been done with HIV. We we'll probably need to have a cocktail of different drugs to help contain the virus. So it's possible that we will need a com combinatorial approach to therapies, both on the human side and on the viral side. But don't forget, it's all a hoax, right? <laughs> all of these people would be studying and telling you they're studying shit that they're just not. They're just sitting around drinking coffee all freaking day long, twiddling their thumbs, playing along with this whole thing until November 4th? <laughs> Fuck out of here. The superpower of explainable AI and supercomputing. Dan's team at ORNL has been consciously building explainable AI tools for applications across many researchable areas. Coupled with the Summit supercomputer, Dan's team can examine gene expression data at a much larger scale than a fraction of time it would take on a desktop computer. Go, Dan! and your team. It takes significant computing power and the integration of results from other existing research to make sense of the data. They examined 17,000 different samples of people and their organ tissues to understand the normal gene expression patterns involved in uninfected individuals. Jacobson said there was a Sunday afternoon eureka moment just staring at the data in the context of different pathways. We've been very interested in the RAS pathways because coronavirus so often targets them. When we looked at the COVID-19 expression data in the context of the RAS pathway, these patterns jumped out at me by simply looking at the data in a different way. Using the system biology and underlying environmental and biological considerations can be examined using explainable AI and supercomputing. The groups uh, work on other projects that involve a broad range of biology, including bioenergy, microbiomes, cardiovascular disease, autism, opioid addiction, and suicide, to name a few. Building tools that can apply to a variety of projects not only allows researchers to save time, it can also add a level of additional transparency to the process to ensure accuracy. 
So the takeaway here is that AI and explainable AI used in research uh, to take a more holistic view to basic scientific research, emphasizing the need to understand the body's mechanism to find cheaper and better ways to develop clinical treatments. That's freaking awesome. And I will, there's more to it. I could continue reading, um, but I'll link it at bizarrebest.com for you. It's a jungle out there for Amazon drivers and they're doing anything they can to get the next order. Um, they have started hanging smartphones in trees next to dispatch stations in Chicago suburbs to get a leg up on rivals. Their phones are gonna come up missing, dude. Just saying. As part of the new green trend, which was also spotted at the Whole Foods, workers go out on a limb to take advantage of proximity-based software used by the firms to dole out delivery gigs. They're gaming the system in a way that makes it harder for Amazon to figure it out. They're just a step ahead of Amazon's algorithm and, and its developers to get a split second jump on the competition. The work starved drivers sync their primary cell phones to a second one and dangle it from a tree branch and wait nearby the outlet. The low hanging hack allows them to get assignments before other drivers who may be as close as one block away from the company buildings, but their phones won't be in trees, so they won't get them as soon. According to experts and people familiar with the situation, the work, star drivers, work starved drivers are resorting to the extreme measures in some cases to score $15 delivery routes amid a pandemic ravaged economy that's been hit by more than 10% unemployment rate. Drivers who aren't hip to the move have taken to social media to try and dig up dirt on their competitors' tracks. Others have complained to Amazon that cheating competitors are rigging the system, prompting a vague response from the company. Dude, <laughs> whatever you need to do to get the job done. <laughs> the firm responded that it would investigate, but it wouldn't be able to reveal an outcome to its drivers, according to the internal emails obtained by Bloomberg. The firm uses a Uber-like app dubbed Amazon Flex that lets drivers who are paid per delivery use their own cars and work their own hours. They must secure delivery routes via the app. At Chicago area Whole Foods stores where the branch dangling gadgets were spotted, drivers compete for quick delivery grocery orders. The so-called instant offers require an immediate response from nearby workers and take between 10 and 45 minutes to complete. Amazon declined to comment, and Whole Foods didn't immediately reach out um, to return the post request for comment on Thursday. Yeah, don't you just uh, pop up. Thanks, dude. I'm in the last sentence of the story. Just stop it with the pop-ups. Are we, are we in 1990 where you, you need to have a pop-up? I mean... And it's not the kind of pop-up that, like, we used to get on Amazon or on uh, AOL or anything. <laughs> Where it just comes up and lags in front of the screen and you, you can hit the X. No, these are, like, ad pop-ups inside the page that, like, come over into the screen and you have to wait for it. Because if you hit it too soon, it'll freaking change the page on you and shit. It pisses me off. Anyway... <laughs> Thank you for uh, tuning in tonight, and thanks for tuning in all week. I won't be able to do the news tomorrow. Uh, my mom has some doctor's appointments, so I will be busy with that. In any event, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Hang in there. Tomorrow's Friday. You can do it, and I'll see you on Monday. You all take care and stay bizarre. Yeah. Make sure you take a deep breath. Think positive. Just saying. Dude. Penguins given free reign to roam around the aquarium since there's no visitors allowed. That's awesome. Dude, look. He's looking around. He's loving it. I got a new section under the on the headlines page at the bottom called Bad Seeds. Matt Geats of Florida.
first congressional district mocked the whole process by wearing a gas mask when reviewing the funding. You're a super freaking winner, dude. An Alaska airman has been punished for peeing in the office coffee maker. Dude, why? Like, how did, why? Did you take it in the bathroom with you? Did you stand in the kitchen and whip it out? Clearly, this airman is dedicated to getting kicked the F out. He's trying really hard, y'all.